the start. I'm Sierra, I'm and Rick. this is Rick. Um, he will be doing the webcast today about Hardware Hacking 101 and Intro to Hardware Hacking. So um, welcome to everyone that's here. Thanks for being on live. If you have any questions or comments, type them into the questions, and I will be answering them. All right. Hi, I'm Rick Wister. I'm a, a security analysis here at VHS. Um, woo, woo. Probably been working now oh, three years. I just had my three year anniversary. Um, been exciting, fun. Uh, my father had three teens. Oh my gosh, if you guys have teens, don't have them. They're, <laughs> don't, they're don't horrible have horrible creatures. Yes. It's Jeez. short. By the time it's like you really, yeah. it'll be over. Yeah, and like, then you'll be sad. Yeah, I know that. Got yeah, one drive and another one starting to drive and another one just a vehicle to get ready to drive. So, anyway, uh, husband. Uh, hobbies, I love home remodeling, as we were talking about in the preview. Uh, I also do um, build the cabin uh, on the side, so I'm very busy um, hunting, fishing when I have time, and, uh, of course, electronics and just breaking things and fixing things and doing that stuff. Uh, background, I'm a veteran. I worked on a two TR-1 aircraft as a, a, a maintenance tech. Uh, I worked for contract manufacturing. We built uh, all kinds of... Uh, motherboards, SCSI controllers, you name it, we built all that stuff um, as a as electrical engineer there, um, technician, I kind of grew up in that atmosphere. Um, and then uh, I was a non-trad, uh, got my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering while I was working, which was, do not do that, it was a pain. Um, don't go to school while you're working? <laughs> yeah, uh, while you're working and raising a family. I don't know how do you... it while you're young, get out of school. Um, and then uh, I also didn't have enough school I actually started with an associate's degree in electronic technology with a networking background and computer work, and then went into my bachelor's degree. So I probably have enough education to be a doctor, although it's not in one field. So uh, enough about me. Let's go on to the, the next slide here. All right, uh, we're talking about Hardware Hacking 101. Uh, I'm going to go through some tools. Um, recon, we're going to talk about recon. Um, we're going to talk about device isolation if needed. Um, device wiring, system setup, and evaluation. Um, so what I have along with this is a demo that I did. It's a simple demo, um, although uh, anything hardware hacking you'll find out is not simple. Um, you you really got to have the patience and persistence to keep at it, keep going with it, and, and make it, uh, you know, you might have to walk away, drink a beer, come back, and then uh, tackle it again, um, which um, sometimes happens quite a bit, sometimes not enough. All right, let's move on to tools. So, um, of course, you're going to have many, many tools. Um, this is just a list that I have. Uh, magnifying glass is because I'm getting old. Um, to read the chips. Um, solder and iron, of course. Solder wick, all the stuff comes with solder and iron. Solder suckers. Some people uh, believe in those. Um, I use solder wick. Um, I'm not doing that much. If I'm doing a lot of soldering, which I don't, um, solder wick works. Um, I, soldering is so fun. I would, yes, it is awesome. It's a, it's a, it's a craft, and uh, it takes a lot of practice to get really good at it. So, a uh, hot air tool. I love the hot air tool. Hot air tool is my, my, my favorite tool. Um, if you're trying to safely move a chip or, uh, or device off the board, I even move faster or whatever with it. Just a lot easier, a lot faster. Um, tweezers, pliers, capped on tape. Capped on tape. Uh, by the way, capped on tape is, is a gold tape. It's like a heat shield, uh, so you can put it around the chips. So you're not burning off all those little. Uh, if you're using, especially if you're using a hot air tool, if you're burning off, you don't burn off those little resistors, surface mount resistors or capacitors that are on the board. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cheap. Um, it's cold. It's pretty cool. Um, so it's it, it works. It's wonderful. Uh, digital meter. Um, and we'll continue on breadboard, power supply. Uh, you can hook your circuit up to if you need to. Jumper wires, breakout board, bench top, power supply, test clip. Uh, test clip, um, I don't think I have that. Uh, essentially, what the clip is, is a, you can clip it onto the chip and it has wires come out. It makes it easier to isolate that chip if you need to isolate it or just clip onto it while it's still on the circuit. Um, sometimes you can isolate it. We'll talk about that later. Isolation. Um, uh, Bus Pirate, Shikra, Atafi, um, but I don't know. It might be Atafi, I'm not sure. Uh, Detagulator, all those are products you can get off the shelf to read in from our right firmware. Um, Detagulator is just strictly Detagulator UART. Um, pretty cool. We had some labs if you're a while 
Wild West Hack Fest. We had Jade Tagulator Labs. That's a mouthful of a name. Yes. <laughs> Jade Tagulator. No, and, I meant Wild West Hack yeah. Fest. And, uh, and we had the bus fire, and I had a shift lab there. And that's what I'm going through here, is, uh, is that lab. Um, so, and I need a lot from a laptop from using Cali um, software. Uh, I think I'm using Flash ROM for this. And uh, of course, the internet uh, to do your research and stuff. So let's go into it. Um, uh, anything with anything you're doing as a pen tester, recon is vital, uh, vital part of any uh, test that you do. And same with hardware hacking. I mean, you need to know, figure out what the board was doing. Was I con when I was a contract manufacturer, uh, I was a technician for a while on these uh, SCSI controllers, and we, <laughs> we, we. Uh, we kind of owned it. Um, I started on it, and I worked on it for about three months, and uh, they had this light code on it. And I'd read the light code, I'd troubleshoot it down to the chip, figure out what the problem was. Um, and then I just started take, taking documentation of those chips and the light code. Um, so wherever the light codes got stuck at, I would document that chip. So we had this, this uh, junior technician come on, and he, uh, he says, well, how do I start? I said, well, you just got to probe. So he, I gave him about a month. He's probing and finding out. He's doing a really good job. And then I finally just gave him the vital. I said, here you go. You plug it in. You see the light sequence. You put an arrow on the chip. You send it off. And we went through like many, 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 many of the, My boss was like, I don't know how you guys are doing like 200, 200 boards a night. I said, the funny thing is we're taking half the night off to do homework. <laughs> so that yeah, was pretty impressive. So uh, if you know how the board's working, um, and in that, in that case, I, uh, you know, I, I knew what, what chip was talking to what chip. It was really easy after a while to figure out what, where everything was going. Also, the software, I developed a software. They gave us a platform on it, a customer did, and then I was able to break that and then make it go so uh, it would loop on one one process if it was failing on that process. So uh, that's where Recon comes in. Um, really got to basically know what's going on, chip identification. Usually where I start is I, I, I Get the board, check it out. I usually look for JTAG uh, headers, see where those are going. Um, usually, if those will indicate that it's going to either a firmware device or something that could be programmed. Um, also, uh, I'll I'll do data sheets on all the on the, all the chips, check out, see what chips what. Um, it'll give you a lot of information just knowing what those chips are. Um, you can follow traces. Um, you can probe the board with a multimeter. Um, all those things to figure out what's going on with the board. Um, in this case, I'm doing, um, we're going to be hacking a dun, dun, dun. Linksys E1200. I think I put 21 in here. Well, E1200 um, home router, um, pretty simple, but kind of gives you a basic of where to go to and then just go from there. And then if it does, if, if, if you can't figure it out after a while, sometimes you just got to get the right tool and take care of it, right? <laughs> All righty. So, it already sounded like you sort of left me. I've been there before, yes. I've been there. Uh, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> uh, so hardware hacking. So in this case, uh, we take this motherboard, uh, this board, name it, motherboard, little board, um, and identify the chips that are on it. Um, I, I, I did have, that was funny because I was, uh, there's a, I can't see it. Yeah, there's one, two, three, okay. Yeah, there was a, um, there's a shield over one part of it and it's, it is, uh, I thought it was a chip under there at first and it's just a bunch of capacitors and stuff. So there's four chips here that I'm, I'm looking at, uh, trying to identify, and then uh, we walk through those chips. So the first, uh, the first chip, um, it's just a, a memory chip, um, some SDB RAM, um, SD RAM. So um, that was nothing that was really interested in, although you can pull some information off of it. So you basically just Googled whatever would put yeah. it on it. So you Google what it did. Yeah. Google, what, Google's, Google what's on it. Um, see if you can find the data sheet. The data sheet's going to be full of a lot of information uh, tell you how the chip is connected, what the pinouts are, et cetera. We get into that more as we go. Um, so then the, the second chip uh, was a Broadcom chip. Uh, Broadcom doesn't really like to put out um, data sheets on our stuff, um, although there is some stuff you can find, um, but um, they're not, they're, it's kind of harder to find with Broadcom stuff. And you might come across some pro proprietary chips, which um, they were developed for that customer, and they don't share those data sheets. So um, that, that could be a, a problem, you know, where you're not going to identify that. And usually those are your big ball grid array. And the ball grid array, so 
Um, let's go back here. Um, this is a service mount pin. Um, so you have uh, the way it's soldered on, it's soldered on with pins. Uh, a ball grid is actually what this Broadcom chip is, um, which what it is, a bunch of balls underneath that chip, they're connected to the chip, and then there's a, a, a pad uh, of a lot of little balls that just solders to, so when they solder it down, it solders to it, so you can't see any of the, of the solder joints. Um, and the cool thing is when you're doing contract manufacturing, when you do those ball grid arrays and you're troubleshooting a board, you, everybody always expects that to be where there's an open, and it's not always the case. Um, in fact, most of the time it's not, especially if they have the profile right to, to put the chip on. But the cool thing is you send that through an x-ray machine. There's a big x-ray machine that goes through, and it takes slices and layers of it. Um, pretty expensive piece of equipment that uh, used quite extensively. Um, so that's a Broadcom chip. Um, we go over to when we find our CMOS serial flash um, chip. And uh, this is the chip we're interested in um, because it is a flash chip, so it's holding some data. Um, so that's, that's the chip we're going to hack. And then the other one is just a synchronized uh, stereo <coughs> converter chip that's a little guy in the corner. I'll go back up to here. So uh, number three is the one we're going to be we're going to be hitting. So in this case, uh, this this uh, router was uh, was dead. So I can just power it on and, and hook to it. And, uh, and, and check is this it out. one you actually had at your house? Yeah, this is one that I have. I have an inventory of lots of dead stuff. There's some stuff I pull out of a dumpster. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> because some or somebody will be like, hey, uh, I got this old computer you want to have to get. And, uh, and Did I'll your wife hate you? Yes. <laughs> I'll repurpose it. Actually, I'm getting my uh, boy involved in repurposing uh, these, and then we give them to, uh, I'm, I'm part of Boy Scouts, we'll give them to the Boy Scout family that doesn't have a computer. But Cool. Or whatever. So it's pretty cool. It's, it's a cool recycle program. So um, I, I've given that to my boy because I don't have the time. <laughs> I don't know why not. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> okay, so uh, so we're, we're looking at the pin identification now. Um, sorry if there's uh, I gotta I gotta play the John card. Um, if there's um, I didn't look at these before. Yeah, so. if, I, if I made a mistake in there, I'm human. I did it. We'll um, fix it so in post. We'll fix it later. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully. Uh, there may be uh, a few errors there, just just precursors there. Um, so we look at this chip. Uh, I pull the data sheet for this chip. Um, look and see. I get the pin out, um, and 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 also there's a block diagram of how how this chip works. Um, with the pin out, it's pretty cool. It tells you what pin, each pin is. Like you have your chip select, um, and you have uh, your VCC ground, your um, write protect, and your hold. And so all these all these mean something, um, and that's kind of what you're using. Uh, you'll use this chip for um, to gather information off of it. Um, I go back into header identification here. There was these headers on here, um, and I went to probe them out. I'm not sure if it was because the board was bad or not, but it looked like they went mostly to the Broadcom chip. So um, I'm not sure if those headers would have helped me out uh, with programming. Uh, normally they would. Um, but it was pretty uh, not evident that it went directly to the, the flash chip there. Um, like I said, you can follow traces. There's traces. Remember, there's traces layers of board, so there might be traces inside. There might be traces underneath because the board, the way the board's built, is there's layers of it. There's you know, several layers. I'll put a layer on, maybe put some traces in, put another layer on, put another, and that puts the traces on the outside. So. Um, there could be traces on the inside. Uh, if you find a via, a via usually goes all the way through and it connects. It's like a node. It'll connect traces from the inside to the outside and, and vice versa. So um, that's that's pretty much how a printed circuit board works. Um, and that's header. So uh, normally, like I think uh, some of the labs we did, we, we only had tag the JTAG, uh, JTAGulator actually we used. We hooked it up to, um, have those are Nemo switches, we hooked those up to, to get UART data off of them. And JTAG related them to find out what the JTAG pins were. Um, and, the, and if you, nobody knows what the JTAG later is, uh, what is this look? pretty much a pin enumerator? Um, it'll tell you which pins the clock, which pins the TDL, TDI, um, and, and by pin all the way down to try to enumerate that. It's not always successful, but uh, a lot of time it is. I think uh, Brian is trying to come up with another solution to do that. So, Brian Herman, that is. Nice. So, we'll see. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to commit him on that because. Uh, I don't know, his time is probably just like mine, so. <laughs> uh, 
so we did the header identification. Uh, let's go back to, uh, all right. Uh, so I had to isolate this chip, and to do so, I decided, hey, let's just solder, take it off the chip. It's really easy to take off. Um, a lot of people are like, yeah, yeah, it's really easy. But it is, uh, especially if you had a hard air tool, um, which I brought to show you mine. And mine is uh, kind of a standalone device. It's a Leister gun. And uh, you know, what it does, you can just, uh, you turn it on, you can adjust the airflow and the heat. Um, and, and the technique is just to keep the air moving. Uh, you get it hot, but keep the air moving. And as long as you keep that swirling um, heat, it'll eventually, that solder will start turn, uh, liquefying and you can just pull the chip off without really damaging it or overheating anything. Um, and that's where the cap on tape comes in play too. So, um, yeah, chip clips I've talked about, you got ground clips. Um, if I wasn't going to isolate this, if I, I'd still have to isolate it in the circuit. Um, usually if the circuit kicks off, uh, when, when the power is up, you might have to ground the ground, uh, ground the, the right protect chip or, or pin, or you might have to ground the hold pin or, or tie some of those uh, to ground or BCC to get the chip to open up and say, hey, uh, you can talk to me. So uh, it, uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, you, this chip, you can perfectly uh, daisy chain, and so it'll talk. You can talk to another device uh, if you wanted to within the data sheet is what it said. So... Um, Pretty interesting device, um, but <laughs> uh, so uh, you get the clock stuff. So we go on to um, wiring the wiring it for hacking. So um, you have to get all the chips, of course. And you didn't then, take about having a drink and move to the next one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yes, you got to move to the next one. Have a drink. How move. frustrating is this? It, it can be frustrating. Like Sierra always says, "Hey, you guys got to do a webcast about this." Uh, <laughs> we everybody fights like, hey, yeah, this this doesn't happen in a day, you know. This is, it takes uh, uh, several hours um, over the uh, several hours a day. <laughs> yeah, several hours a day for for about a month. So I know um, it's hard. I when know. we when we set the wildest hacking uh, labs, uh, there was a lot of time um, this year I did uh, supply to us, but there was also a lot of our free time we put into that too. And um, Sierra knows that, and she free time. She uh, she liked that. She, she I, was cool. Yeah, it is. And I, I know that you're going to spend like buku amounts of time doing the the new labs for Wild West Hacking Fest, and I do appreciate it. So yes, when you get to Wild West Hacking Fest, tell them how much you like uh, it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Can't wait. That's going to be fun. Um, fun to set up. Okay, so um, um, isolate the chip. Uh, what I, I put in here is a stipulation. Um, it might not get it right the first time. Uh, that's where persistence and patient comes in. Uh, uh, do I need to? Do I need to ground the hold, or did I need to uh, hold the hold high? Um, it kind of tells you, but sometimes data sheets aren't that specific. You know, they won't say. They'll just say hold, set it high for, you know, deselecting. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it says here, but um, set it high or whatever. So if you don't know. Um, Try either or, um, it, and you'll get the combination right. Um, here's the question from Will. I was having trouble, and a couple other people have asked questions, but I'm going to hold their questions. But Will says, I'm having trouble hearing about the device isolation. What is the purpose of isolation? What does isolation mean in the context of an embedded device? Good, good, good advice. Good, a good question. So uh, with with uh, device isolation, what you're trying to do is you're trying to isolate it away from the other circuit. So if I was to have this on on the board, and I wanted to isolate that, but I was trying to power it up while I was trying to, to do it. I It would be extremely hard to do that because it might be sending data to that chip, right? So what I'm doing is I'm isolating that chip from the circuit. Um, and in this situation, I take it out of the circuit. I, I take it off. But isolating this chip is, is something you want to try to get it by itself, uh, especially if you're reading contents from it. Um, you can still use the onboard power, um, and especially, and usually when you are, uh, hacking something that's on a device, you're using that that power on it. So if you're if you're going to like in this case we're dumping the firmware off this chip, um, you really have to isolate it from the rest of the of the circuitry, and that's what we're doing. Is trying to, trying to isolate it. Any other question? Um, Will says thank you. You're right. welcome. Will. No, good, good question. Um, Will. Well, I guess if we're paused for a second, there are a couple other okay. questions, and if you have if you're going to go through it, then you can let me know. But um, 
Raphael says, when you have an idea about hacking a piece of hardware, where's the best place to find reliable documentation? Do you just always Google stuff? Yeah, uh, the internet's huge. It's one of the, the tools internet. I have on there. Uh, the internet's huge. Um, they'll, you'll find places where people are maybe I'll already hacked that, hacked that device. Um, maybe they went about it a different way. And, and this is not set in stone. I mean, you're not, the way I went about it was, may not be somebody else's way of going about it. They might have used the Shikra or the and I do use the Shikra. Um, I used actually both the best part and the Shikra, but um, the Adafi board, and that's what uh, BB King told me he's using. So um, BB King's getting in this as well. Um, so kudos to him. Um, sounds like he got this board. So I, I actually got it. I actually got it yesterday in the mail. So I got to play with that. Um, but it's not. There's not a you know one size fits all. That's why hardwire hacking is. Is, is cool and, and frustrating at the same time. <laughs> you just got to do it. Because if you set Brian Furman, myself, and David Fletcher down and say, hack this, we totally do it differently and probably approach it differently. Um, but uh, it, it's the methodology is about the same. You know, you're going to do recon. You're going you're gonna to go find out what, what is this product doing. Um, I mean, you probably already know it's a, it's a Wi-Fi router or it's a, it's a switch or it's a Nemo switch. Um, so. You're probably going to know basically what it does, um, but trying to figure out what the circuitry does. Yeah, that's, it goes, yeah, it goes, uh, that's, that's huge. Um, are you going to talk about buzzing hardware to find weak points? Um, no, I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, okay. That'll be more advanced. Okay. So, and since um, this is intro, this is kind of intro. Yeah, um, okay. but that's cool. I'll get him to do another one for you guys. <laughs> okay. All right, so what tools do we need? Um, do any software, of course, uh, laptop, um, drivers. Do you need drivers for what um, product you're using? If you're using the, um, the Bus Pirate or a Xilinx programmer or uh, I2C I um, Puck, I have one of those. Um, depending on what you have, um, just get the tools, drivers for that. Um, manual, you can look at the manufacturer's website. Um, to see how to use and stuff. The bus part has, uh, when I first used the bus part, there wasn't a lot of documentation, but they've really exploded. There's a lot of documentation out there. I think I have version 3.5 is my um, or my uh, board version. I think they're up to four, uh, version 4. Um, uh, VCC and ground references. So this is a, this is important. Um, so whenever you're hardware hack, you know, you're, you're doing a chip, you want to make sure your references uh, to VCC and ground are the same. So you want to make sure that what your device is seeing as as the as the VCC, which is is the positive voltage, five three point three volts, five volts, twelve volts, whatever it is, is the same that, that the board seeing or the same that the chip seeing. So um, the device and the chip all have to be on the same playing field, of course. Is that that's how, how you oh, look field? at it? Yeah, or field. Failed. Failed. Same thing. <laughs> Depends on where you're at in the country. Or how uh, you decide to spell it. Yeah, and then and then the same with the ground plane. So you have the ground plane. That, the grounds have to be tied together, so you're going to hook the ground from the, the bus pirate to the chip, um, where the chip's getting powered from, and uh, same with the VCC. So you got to be on the same uh, playing field, and uh, how are you going to interface with this? Are you going to interface it through this custom software they have, a terminal, a uh, bus pirate's terminal? And then also um, do look at the website uh, for bus pirate or any of those devices, and you'll find some tutorials there that will help you out. And bus pirate has a lot of tutorials out there now. It's it's, it's crazy how far they've come in, in six months. So uh, let's go on to it. So uh, first, I remove the device. Um, I'm not going to remove it here. Uh, I've already did that, but I'll show you uh, pretty much how I did that. And I did that with the hot air tool, as I, sh as I was as demonstrating. Um, just uh, keep it. Keep it moving, keep it quick, it'll heat up, you know, kind of evenly. Um, see, I use Can you damage from. it if you get it too hot? Yes, you can damage it. <laughs> um, I think the first time I learned, and, and, and you know, I'm I'm still at learning as I go. Um, I've did this several, several times um, in the contract manufacturing environment. But uh, when I first started, I didn't use Kapton tape, and I blew all these resistors all over the place and couldn't find them. And, Oh uh, well, yeah, it was it was a mess. It took me probably about two hours to get up, get all the parts, and put it back together and get it right. And, uh, so uh, the Kapton tape will save you, um, especially with the parts next to it, keep it from damage. Cool. Um, but uh, here I use the Exacto knife uh, to kind of lift it up, just kind of put a little pressure on it, um, and once you start, you'll start seeing the solder flow, and then you just start lifting it up uh, gently and pull it right off there. Um, so it's pretty. 
it's a pretty easy process, um, but it does take practice. All right, so then we go to, uh, we, we, I place the body. So what I use is a breakout board here. The nice thing about a breakout board is it has a header on it that attaches to the pins. So it makes it easy for you to attach. You're not trying to put these little clips on where the solder hits the pins. Um, I've did that before, but it, it's really a pain. Or soldered little wires onto that, oh uh, which which was just horrible. Um, which which something you might, if you have a chip clip, that's something you might do if it was in, uh, still attached to the circuitry on the board. Um, so I, I, I placed it, soldered it on onto the onto the breakout board, so I have the pins exposed and matters. And the nice thing about this chip, uh, breakout board is um, it takes different kinds of chips. Um, they're all over the place. Look at Amazon. They have DigiKey has a bunch of them too. So then we have to wire the device. So, um, so we, we 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 know the pin from the data sheets, uh, uh, the pin structure of the of the device. So now we're going to uh, interface that device with the bus pirate. So we have to uh, mesh the pins together. Um, the nice thing uh, about this is um, that that they have awesome awesome instructions on what their pins are and. They're pretty much the same. I mean, you see CS is on there. CS was on the chip. You see uh, MS, MISO, well, there's uh, SISO. So there, there are a lot of similar, similar similarities between the chip and the bus pirate. So as, a, uh, as I go through the wiring device here, I talk about where the chips are. And then you can see my nice little uh, drawing there where all those arrows go. So if you can follow that, if you can't, then look at the, look at the thing below. Um, and we will have these slides also available so you can just flip through them on your own too when we post it next Monday. Yes. And, um, <clears throat> so um, really just just cross-referencing, getting the, the wiring correct on the breadboard versus the best pattern in, in your device. Uh, all right, so um, there's uh, with the bus part, there's multiple um, OS capabilities. Um, they have OS X, Linux, Windows. Um, some are, are paying other than others. Um, so the software, the software uh, I mentioned earlier, where I use Flash ROM um, to dump the firmware off the device, um, and uh, and then uh, open they have Open OCD um, is another software that's for more JTAG, but you, it also works with the bus pirate. Bus pirate can also do JTAG, um, and uh, also JTAG programming. Uh, there's a complete list, and I have a link there. And like Sierra said, this will be shared. Okay, so Kevin has a good question. He says, place the device on a breakout board, and he feels like this is maybe a little vague for a noob. Can you maybe oh, yeah. expand on that? Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, so, you got to, you know, with the breakout board, um, is really just the pads like the chip came off of. Um, so, uh, you just match them up, put them on there, and you'll so actually solder, solder the chip onto the board. Um, soldering is another skill that you have to learn. Um, and you have shorts and stuff, but I'm going to tell you one thing that if you're new to soldering and you're learning and you're getting ready to start, get solder paste. Solder paste is going to be your friend. Solder paste, solder paste is the best stuff ever. If you talk to Brian Furman, he will preach up and down about solder paste because he's a newbie and he was doing it. I mean, I've, I've been doing it for years, and, and solder paste does make it a lot a lot easier. Um, solder paste is just some goo that you put on there. Um, paste? Yep. It just looks like a, uh, it, it's kind of more liquidy than pasty, but mm -hmm. um, but you can you can put on that, and they certainly have all kinds of different stuff. But it was it makes the solder flow better, and the solder flows to the metal and not in between mixed bridges. Is is that's really what helps out? It doesn't make bridges um, or short your pins together is what the bridge is. So um, yeah, just you just go through and you solder that onto the breakout board, and then the breakout board, like I said, has the headers already attached to those pads, so you can attach wires to it pretty easy. Cool. Um, Steve just wrote in and said Dave Jones from the EEV blog on YouTube has a great intro to soldering. Um, so you guys can check that out. Right. Cool. All right, so you do the software. So um, it's time to uh, read the contents of the chip, but we have to find out what um, the bus part, what, what bus it's on. Uh, computer bus. So um, if you do an LS, uh, and I'm in Linux, of course, um, if you do an LS of the devices on TDY's uh, asterisk, it'll give you a list, as you see there, of all the TDY devices. I do it without the uh, USB device plugged in and with the USB device plugged in, or the 
bus pirate, I should say, plugged in, and you find out that it is the USB zero um, is the device that we're using. Um, so that gives you indication of, of where you want to where you want to tell uh, the command line uh, the command to go to the device. So then I use this uh, this command here, um, uh, which was pretty interesting. I, the big thing that got me on this was uh, was the speed. So um, flash rom dash p or uh, dash p uh, bus pirate SBI they have you have you tell where you tell the um, what the device is. It's a TTY USB zero. Um, the SBI speed that is yeah, just pulls me away. I I tried putting different variables in there and it didn't really make a difference. So um, and then you, you do the dash c to give it what type of device it is, and then um, the dash r tells it where uh, your your what file you're spin, you're sending this uh, this dump to, the firmware to. So um, I'm dumping it to the SBI dump type bin uh, as the name of my file, and also um, I have to say that this this uh, the bus part takes a while on this chip. Um, if you ever come to a hardware hacking, a while less hacking. If you ever come to that, you'll find out that uh, that I do both, and um, and we walk through them, and you can walk through them there, and it's it you can see the difference. It's it's huge. Um, it takes about 30 minutes um, for the bus part to read the memory, um, and and I've, I've kind of looked into it. So I, I I didn't get a chance to, to research it anymore to see to find out why, um, but one one person at well as Hackfest does working like probably. I think I spent about two hours with that guy. He uh, he said that um, uh, it's part of the, the bus, the way that way it's handling the chip on the actual bus pirate on this version. So I think the next version is uh, supposed to be faster. Um, but I do do it with the Shikra as well. Um, and the Shikra pretty much go through the same scenario. I just use the Shikra to dump the flash, and it took like three minutes. It was really, really fast. Cool. Uh, we had a couple cool comments. Yep. Um, Carl said DMESG. Say that, sorry. Works well to find the most recent device connected to. So, nope. Oh, yeah, another way to do it, yes. Um, and W points out that solder paste is different than solder flux. And you might be talking about solder flux because That's solder, flux, solder yeah. flux is for by doing it by hand. So, mm -hmm. yes, correct. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're right. Solder paste out. is when you're doing odd, uh, machines, you put that on there. You guys, you guys know These a lot of things. These guys are awesome. These guys are awesome. Keep me on my toes. Thank, well, thanks for being, thanks for participating because you bring up other <laughs> things we forgot or didn't know or keep us on track. Yes. Uh, so, um, so I, I do the flash. I did it for 30 minutes. Um, get the flash contents, and so then let's uh, let's see what's contained in the flash. So I do a cat of the SBI bin file. Well, of course, it's uh, it's a bunch of gibberish. I'm like, wow, what's going on here? Um, so then, like, well, okay, let's let's run a strings on it. I'm sure that's that's, that's what the problem is. So, uh, as I run a string, matrix. As I run a strings on it, we find out we get the data out of the well, that was uh, on the chip that we we pulled out the chip. Um, so there's a lot of data there. There's a lot of information. Um, if I do that, and I wonder if I can turn this around and do that. Pause one second. Um, Eric is wondering, um, can we go back to breakout boards? Do you recommend a good source for them? Um, I got I got mine off uh, DigiKey, um, but you can Google them just uh, anywhere for the breakout boards. Um, DigiKey, I think Amazon has some. There's uh, there's just a, a lot of places to go to get those. Um, I don't have one particular source, and I it's been like six months since I got them, so I know just when when I purchased them. I can't remember where exactly where I got them from. That's cool. Because I'm always purchasing the stuff, which is crazy. Um, BB King says he like, likes at Ada, Ada, Ada Fruit, ADA Fruit dot com. Oh, yeah. How do you say that? Add your fruit. Yeah. Um, and also that they have good ADA Fruit. Um, they also have good tutorials there. Gosh. And that's yeah, why I'm here, so I can butcher all well, of them. And BB King's nice. Uh, he, he's getting into our rack, too, so we can. Uh, I think he's working on some projects also for Wallace Hagen Fest, so um, which would be pretty cool yeah. to have some more uh, input on that. Um, so I'm I'm not sure if I'm really going to see this, but probably uh, not. What, what okay. is it you're going to show them? Um, I can do it here too. Okay. Um, Sorry. So uh, I, I, if we had better system set up, I could show you more. But someday, um, someday. So here I have the have the circuit board and everything tied uh, together, and uh, I highly recommend.
in, get these um, these little power supplies. Let's go back here. Um, so this little breadboard power supply, this with the green light on it there, um, mm -hmm. that actually just has the pins that connect to the uh, the power bus, the breadboard. Um, they're really, really cheap. I got them off Amazon. I think it was eight dollars for a flat of eight, um, something like that. And uh, the funny thing was, is I uh, I got the devices, and then you have to break them apart. And I broke a bunch of them apart, and I got used, and there was two of them. The switches didn't work correctly. So what I ended up doing is I had, I emailed them and said, hey, but, you know, I'm not complaining, and don't give me any more. They were a they're dollar like, really each. cheap, you know. <laughs> I said, but um, just to let you know, these switches weren't working, and. I got a response right away. It was really, really interesting. I got a response right away, and they said, uh, yeah, great, I'll we'll let our quality assurance know, and we'll, we'll get that fixed. And, right. and they also asked me, do you want new ones? Do you want new ones? And I'm, no, 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 don't worry about it. We'll give you up. So, uh, that was, so that was great. That. Yeah, but uh, I highly recommend those. The nice thing is you can change the jumper, or you can change the, uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there's a jumper right here um, that you can change it from. From 3.3 volts to 5 volts, um, and it just takes a, a power adapter that you everybody has laying around, you know, off of an old router or something. And uh, or you can take USB, USB power too. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, so those those are those are another cool tool to have definitely. Um, so I run I run this. Um, I, I need something a little better, so I do a grep. Um, we grep some ass because we we like doing that here. Uh, <laughs> And we find out that uh, we get the password and, uh, and, and off the off the chip. So uh, of course you're going to see that the zombie bomb, vampires and candy. Um, dun dun dun. dun, dun. And that's so this goal. was this was the password to this router. Yeah, this was the password to this router. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did another grip, but I don't have it on here. That's what I was going to show you. But I do the SSID. SSID actually on this was just the default. It's just um, SSID, um, but then you can go through and you can uh, check out all the all the stuff that was on that. Um, the cool thing about this is that uh, um, I had a, a friend that worked at the hospital, and he said, "Yeah, we just throw all our, you know, where this router die." And I said, "Well, what'd you do with it?" Because I was gonna you ask if I could have it, and they threw it out. They threw it in the dumpster, and uh, so he he actually got was able to get it out of the dumpster and. Uh, Give it to me, and I'm like, dude, dude you know, if did you guys change your password or anything? Because he said it just died on him, and I said, did you guys change? And they didn't your do anything; they just threw the whole thing out. Yeah, they threw the threw the router out, but they had the mesh mesh network, so they put the new router in and just took off. And I'm like, did you guys take any of the, uh, you know, did you guys change your password or anything? And you're like, no, we just threw that. I'm like, oh. you know, there's still a dead on this that somebody could get the password to uh, your Wi-Fi. So. Uh, yeah. Something, don't throw your stuff out. Um, just give it to me. Just send, ship it to me and I'll. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, he doesn't really have yeah, time to deal no, with it anyway. No, so. I don't. So, um, <clears throat> so that's, that's really uh, the walkthrough that I got. Um, it's very basic, um, not very, um, but, but on a high level. Um, and thanks for you guys for asking questions, uh, especially, you know, as, as you do this stuff more and more and more, you forget where you came from and, and, and being a beginner as well. So it's nice to have those beginner uh, questions in there. There's no stupid question. Because um, we all learn sometimes. Yeah, so oh, yeah. I've, I've been there. I know I've been there on the wall. I actually pulled my hair out, you know, thinking about stuff that's my bald. So, uh, uh, yeah. Stressful life you lead. Um, but that's all That's all I have for the webcast. Um, do you guys have any more questions? Yeah. If you have more questions, um, Raphael asks, can you buy just the chip somewhere? Oh uh, yes, you can go to DigiKey. Uh, uh, Mauser is another place. Several places you can go. Um, the cool thing was was um, after I after I did this lab, um, we actually ordered an I ordered another uh, E1200, and I, uh, I I I did the same thing, the same lab because I was going to set up two of the labs. Um, but what I found out was the chip, after I took the chip off, I'm like, oh, geez, I didn't put any information in there. Like, this had vampire candy or whatever in it. So I'm like, well, geez, it's just the default. So the nice thing was I was able to take that chip, put it back on to um, solder back onto the board, power the board back up, program what I wanted to do with it with the web thing, take it back off, put it back on, and it, and it would still work. So you can remove this device several times. It's pretty handy. Okay, so actually a couple of people have written in, so say you are at a job, you have this router die. What is the proper way for disposal? Like it's dead, so I can't like easily yeah. change the password. You can't just wipe it right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, hammer? 
Yes. You can just take it apart and you, you can say, hey, boss, I know where the SBI chip is. I'm going to just grind it, it into together. smithereens. Um, no, actually, I, 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 that's, that's really interesting because I was uh, talking to a friend of mine. Um, he, he, I used to work with him back in contract manufacturing days. Um, he was on, does he, do, he used the solder paste uh, to put the boards on, on the automation. You mean flex? No, solder paste. Ah. He was the, he was the machine guy. Yeah. So anyway, uh, he, he put the, he was that guy and he, he bought this uh, shredding business. And uh, so I was talking to him the other day and he does, uh, he zaps hard drives now with like oh. 10,000 volts through a hard drive. And he does, And he does a DOD, he has a, a contract with DOD. Um, and does that and a bunch of businesses around. So I was going to ask him, well, what if I bring this router in and what happens if you zap that with 10,000 volts? Are we going to blow up the chip? You know, um, does it really fry it? Well, that's what I want to find out. You so that's a good question. So yeah, what do you do with these, these devices? You know, you can Cause send everybody Best Buy has stuff or, that just dies or mm -hmm. it's just old. And, and, and I, you know, Best Buy, I'll take, I think that's what these old stuff, but I think they charge you. I think that's ridiculous. They charge you for the old stuff. Um, you know, hey, you know, unless it's a cord or something. Um, but if you can find a recycler, that's probably the best way to go. But still, you get the data. Do? Um, they'll grind up. So uh, when I went to contract manufacturing, we had a bunch of scrap boards. These are boards that couldn't be fixed. You know, maybe they got a, or we get boards in that came back RMA, um, you know. And that's where I was in the made department. So I'd see a board with a screwdriver scraped all the way back down the back side of it, and you know all these components broken off. Um, so it's something we couldn't really. That's one way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just 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 take a screwdriver. To it. Um, but um, what we, what they do? What we do is we send them off to this recycler. We we box it all up, send it off to the recycler, and what they do is they they bake it all down, and then they there was gold and silver and precious Stuff metals they could, in it. they could take off. They take that out. They get rid of all the fiberglass and all that junk, the stuff that they didn't need. And then we get like a check back that pretty much covered the shipping. That's about it. They took so much money off of it. But it was a way to get rid of it. Um, and it didn't cost us really anything to get rid of it. Um, Phoebe King does point out there isn't anything wrong with opening it and chipping off the chips and <clears throat> doing that. So or taking, the, taking your, your frustration tool to it. Uh, that'll work. Um, and Matt says, is there any, do you have any advice for manufacturers to make these devices harder to hack? Yes, it's, uh, I, 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 it's, it's coming around. Um, so there's, there's been a lot of talk about, um, communication, um, using certificates back and forth between chips and stuff. But, um, as far as like hard, the hardware hacking or taking it apart and, and doing stuff with it, there is things in place going forward for that. Um, I think it's still a, in its infancy, so I, I really can't comment on uh, where they're going with that because, I mean, really, uh, there's the pre-flash where you can store the memory or store it on another flash of encrypted, you know, like, um, you know, high-level encryption and then have it where it flashes the flash chip to hold the data every time. So there's going to be some... Uh, there's going to be a lot of cool, interesting stuff coming out um, in the near future to make this stuff more harder, harder to hack. More harder. More harder. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and W asks, do you usually hack networking devices? What other types of hardware do you like to hack? Um, I, it, you name it. Um, all the things? <laughs> yeah, all the things. Um, it, it's cool because I, I have a lot of stuff on a shelf that I'd like to get into, and I haven't got into it. Um, I have a, a thermostat that I want to look into. I have a smart home device. It's like a hub that I like to get into. A lot of smart home uh, uh, things. I really like to get into that. Um, a lot of my friends are getting these smart home stuff, and and uh, so it's so cool to be able to hack that. You know, open my buddy's garage door and say, "Hey, I borrowed your grill you know, uh, <laughs> while you're out of town." Um, just stuff like that. Do um, not like. Yes. Yes. It'll be. It'll be cool. Uh, so that's why I don't have a smart home. Uh, my home is not smart. And that's and why you're going off grid. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you got through the garage and you're like, you can hook them up to your Wi-Fi. Um, no, them up to your I'm yeah. good, thanks. Yeah, no. Why? No. Okay, um, Chad says, I got my feet wet with hardware building at the Thieftastic. Thanks for the presentation. I can't wait for the labs this year. Wildwood Sacrifice. Thank you, yes. Chad. Thanks, Chad. Yeah, I can't um, wait either. I can't wait to start building them. <laughs> Bob. Asks, have you ever tried to get to iPhone data? Um, 
I did a while ago, um, but I, I wasn't successful. I think I kind of gave up on that. It was, well, it was a friend. It was a friend of mine. He's like, "Hey, can you get my uh, my uh, my photos off my phone?" Was well, like, phone dead? Yeah, he, no. he dropped in the water, and, and uh, so I, you know, I messed with a little bit, and then I, I just didn't have time. I'm like, I didn't have time, and I don't think he ever got his photos back. So sad. I think um, I actually took him somewhere and they put him off. You. I didn't feel so bad. Don't grab your phone in the water. Um, Chad says, I'm sure that not all chips store passwords, such as this demo. Um, but if you don't find pa passwords in the dump, what other kinds of things can you look for? Um, you can look for, there might be hard-coded passwords, um, and, and where they're going now we're with uh, crypto talking at, between chips um, and stuff like that, it, it might be something where you can capture the, the crypto key to be able to talk to them. And that's where I see hardware hack is going to go in the future. You're going to have to capture that crypto key somehow to be able to talk to the other chips or even to open up this chip and talk to it. Um, it, it, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting how they go. I've, I've actually heard of a, another company um, where they had their setup, where what they did is they had uh, to upgrade the firmware on the device. A guy had to use his GP, uh, GPG GPG key from uh, from and an SSH in from one one site, and it was a whitelisted IP. And the other guy had to uh, do the same thing from a whitelisted IP. To unlock the device before they could flash it, um, which was pretty interesting security. Um, so it took like you know the two red key nuclear device. You turn your key, I'll turn my key, kind of deal. So, yeah. um, BB King says file system squash FS um, on some routers can mount as a drive and explore. Yes. So there's that too. Um, and then Martin says. Could you do similar things to get the software out of a car engine management system without breaking the car, of course? Yes. Uh, David and, and, and I think Graham, Graham does awesome work in this. They have their Ford, uh, the Ford thing that came actually there at Wild West Hagen Fest. you got to come check it out. This was awesome. Yeah. Um, but David Fletcher has been doing a lot of work in that. I have not got into the car thing. He's really into the car thing. I think we do just, have a blog on does that, have, too. Does he have a blog on that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you have to check that out. Um, I'm, I, I believe you can, and I think Graham does that see what their, their Ford stuff. So pretty cool. Look at look at Graham. I definitely look him up online. I wonder if the new blog is actually check that out. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, if that is the if you have more questions, type them in. Let me know. Ask us. Um, but here is the T-shirt giveaway. So if you are here, which you have to be here to claim your prize, then go ahead and type in the question box and just let me know that you. Around. So our first winner is Brian Reed. If you are here, Brian Reed. Ha ha, John. You're here. Thanks. <laughs> Howdy, says Lacey. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Nice to see you guys. We are super, this has been a fun webcast, you guys. Yeah. Yes. No, it's, you don't win by saying hi, but hello. Um, say hello, everybody. I see no, I see no, I see no Brian Reed. Brian Reed, you got like one second left before I read the next one. Okay, it wasn't clear, says John. Okay, well, I'm gonna read your name if that person's here. Okay, Brian Reed, I think you blew it because you're not here, but if I missed you. Um, and then our second person is David Collins. David Collins, are you here? Oh, there he is. Yay, David Collins. Yeah, so David. email me your size and your address, and then we'll go ahead and send that to you. Sierra, S-I-E-R-A, at B-H-I-S dot co. Um, and then Joshua says, this was awesome, by the way. I loved this. It was my first time introduction to hardware hacking. I've never done this before. LOLs. And that was Joshua? Yes. Joshua, Thanks. man. Got to come to Wild West Hack Fest, buddy. Yes. We'll set you up. We, we, we all stand around the labs, and we uh, help you walk through all this stuff. No, no experience needed, and uh, it, it's cool. It's exciting. And uh, hopefully we have some more advanced stuff coming out, too. So. Um, Carl says another hardware hacking video by BHS posted on May 13, 2006 from a webcast 512.15. Yes, that was um, sending that back to you guys. That was one we did. We, we did have one with Brian Furman a while ago where John like followed him around with a webcam on a computer and like tried to film it that way. That's like one of our most popular YouTube videos, oh, really? which I find funny, but, yeah, funny. but it's a fun one too. So check out some, we do have some more hardware hacking on our YouTube page. 
Um, will you be coming to B-Sides Minneapolis? I guess B-Sides Minneapolis this year like changed um, organizers, and so we won't be there because um, I don't think they're having it this year. I think they're skipping this year and going next year. So we might be there next year. Um, we had a super fun time at CypherCon in Milwaukee this last week. Dave, David was there with the labs, some mm -hmm. of the labs. We had a Wild West Hack Fest. You went to be said to Orlando with some of the labs. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to figure out a way to get our labs back to go to be said Chicago. So if you're there. Um, and what else? Great info. Thanks for the intro to hardware hacking as well, says Kyle. You are welcome. Um, first time being exposed to this was at Wild West Hacking Fest, says Scott. Man. Any chance you're going to get to B-Sides, Connecticut? No, we've never been to B-Sides, Connecticut. Um, but if there's somewhere that you want us to go, email me um, and let me know, like, how many people are there, if, if it would be a cool venue for us, because we're always looking for new places to go, new conferences. Um, we like to go try stuff. I'd be more interested in going to B-Sides, Minneapolis, if you are showing up. Ah, David, that's the best. Thank you. Um, our first person was Brian Reed. He wasn't here. David Collins is here. So our second person, I guess, Brian Reed blew it, is James Cornelius. If you're here, James Cornelius, um, let me know, and we will get you a t-shirt. And if you didn't get a t-shirt, uh, stay tuned. Come back to another webcast because we, we've been doing this um, like every time. It's been kind of fun. And, um, and also come see us. Our next conference is coming up is going to be B-Sides Charm. And actually, we talked like super briefly at the very beginning about our new product called AI Hunter. If you want to check more about that, it's at activecountermeasures.com. And John is going to be at B-Sides Charm doing demos with that at our booth. So it's going to be really fun. Um, same time, same bat channel. Yes, Thomas. So yeah. close, James. So close. Yes, come back next time. Anyway, thank you guys so much for coming to our Space intro Space. to hardware hacking. Thank you, Rick, for yes. slaving away for oh. another webcast. Okay. I know I'm such a slave driver, but um, we do appreciate it. And that I know that fun. there's lots of people that um, love the intro to stuff. I get tons of emails from you guys um, about how you feel way over your head and you don't really understand what's happening about anything. Believe me. Huh. I know how you feel. So that's part of why I'm here, so I can be like the biggest dummy on the webcast. You don't need to feel oh, bad because I'm learning all the things. No, well, I. It's, we were all there. We, we are all there, and I there. like even me. I'm not. I'm hardware hacking. I mean, okay. Well, that's cool. It's not my thing, but I am glad you guys are into it. I'm learning all kinds of things about information security, and um, yeah. Snowfrock. Yes, we just were at Snowfrock, and we probably will go next year. It was super fun this year. So, um, yeah. But if you have any questions, comments, if we didn't get to your questions, email me, sierra at bhs.co, and I will forward it to the right person um, and try and get an answer for you. Or if there's just something that you think would be a good idea for a future webcast, this webcast is recorded, and we will have the slides, and it will all be posted next Monday. And if you didn't see, we posted John's Threat Intelligence webcast yesterday, so go check that out. Um, and there's so much good stuff on our blog. Um, we talked about Rick's Keezy blog that we posted recently. There's more hardware hacking on our blog. So go check that out, and we will see you in two weeks when BB King is back for more amazingness. But I will email you. If you're not on our email list, go get on our email list. All right. Thanks, guys. Yep. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.